In this video, we're going to look at using the grid method for non-calculator multiplication. Let's take two double digit numbers. So 27, and we might want to multiply that by 34. So two double digit numbers. What I'm going to do is set up a grid. This is an alternative for long multiplication. So if I set up the grid, I'm going to have now here two columns, one here and one here, and I'm going to have two rows, one here and one here. I'm going to put the multiplication sign in the corner, and at this stage, I can decide whether I put the 27 along the top or the 34. I'm going to put the 27 along the top, and I'm going to split this into tens, which would give me 20, and units, which would give me 7. Splitting 34 into tens and units, 30 is going to be our tens, and 4 is going to be our units. All we need to do is fill out each of these four boxes by multiplying the numbers. So this box is going to be 30 times by 20. 3 times by 2 is 6, and then I add the two zeros. 3 times by 7, that's going to give me 21, and I add the zero. 4 times by 2 is 8, and I add the zero. 4 times by 7 is 28. All I need to do is add these four numbers together. So using column addition, I'm going to write that this is going to be 600. I'm then going to write 210. I'm then going to write 80. I'm then going to write 28. It's entirely up to you which order you do this in. I like to write now the hundreds and then the tens. So what I've done here now is kept this in order. Sometimes students make errors at this stage by not writing this neatly and adding up the wrong column. So I've got 0, 0, 0 and 8. If I add those, I'm going to get 8. 1 plus 8 plus 2, that's going to give me 11. So I write 1 here and I carry 1. 6 and 2, add for 1, that's going to give me 9. And we can say the answer is 918. If you want to check, 27 multiplied by 34 on the calculator gives us the 918. So that is where we have two double digit numbers. Let's look at a double digit and a treble digit. So for example, if we wanted to multiply 43 and let's say we've got 219. This time, again, I can decide whether I put the 219 or the 43 along the top. What I'm going to do is just set this up. So get in my grid, I'm going to have now the following. I'm going to have three columns as I'm going to put now the 219 along the top. So there's one column, two columns, three columns, and I will have two rows. So just writing this in, I've got my multiplication sign here. This time I'm going to split this number up into hundreds, which is 200, tens, which is tens, and units, which is 9. I'm going to take the 43, I'm going to split it into tens and units. 4 times by 2 is 8, and then I'm going to add the zeros. 4 times by 1 is 4, I add the zeros. 4 times by 9 is 36, and I add the zero. 3 times by 2 is 6, and I add the zeros. 3 times by 1 is 3, I add the zero. 3 times by 9 is 27. I'm now going to write this out neatly in columns, starting with the thousands. I'm going to have 8,000. Then I'm going to take the hundreds, 600. I've got 400. I've got 360. Then I'm going to take the tens, 30 and 27. So I've put that neatly in now, these columns. If you've got square paper in your book, just put a small number in each square. I certainly didn't need to do it in this order, but I should have six numbers in here and six numbers here. So adding downwards, all of the zeros and seven will give me seven. Six plus three is nine plus the two, that gives me 11. So I write one and I carry the one. 10, 13, add the one, 14. I write four, I carry the one. One plus eight is nine, 9,417. So let's go ahead and check that. So 43 multiplied by 219. So we get 9417 as we expected.
So multiplying two double digit numbers and multiplying a double by a triple digit number. Okay, now let's say we were given now a question that was actually instead 4.3 multiplied now by 21.9. We can see now that these are very similar. What we have here though are decimals. It really doesn't matter. One way that you could think about this is how many digits in total do we have after the decimals to start with? Well, the answer is going to be two. We've got one just here and we've got one just here. All I would then do is carry out this calculation, but make sure that my answer also finished with two digits after the decimal. So, for example, now we could say that this, we know it's going to be 9417. But as we started with two digits after the decimals in total, we need to end with two. So it becomes 94.17. Another alternative is to say that this one has got 10 times smaller, this one has got 10 times smaller, so our answer is going to be 100 times smaller. And if you think 100 times smaller means that we're going to go from 9417 to 94.17. So with this one, if we have now 4.3 and we multiply this by 2.19, then our answer is going to be 9.417. Just think about this reasonably. If this was, let's just say that this was 4 and this was 2, that would give us 8. If this was 5 and that was 2, it would give us 10. So we can see that this is a reasonable answer. So do go ahead and check that. So there we go, they are examples of using the grid method for non-calculator multiplication.